Hi all, I thought we could run another important engine simulation today for game two at the critical move which took Magnus it seemed by surprise in game two which was at move 10 Caruana playing Rook D8. So let's lead up to that position. So Leela in this simulation is playing white against the mighty Stockfish 9. So this is a game generated by David Grosvenor five minutes with two second increments I believe so knight f6 here knight f3 d5 Leela taking the role of Magnus Carlsen up to this position coming up c5 d takes bishop takes queen c2 knight c6 a3 queen a5 rook d1 and here rook d8 so Magnus actually apparently had quite an intense stare uh, as though trying to stare into Caruana's soul or something trying to get some clues to the motivation the rationale the level of excitement maybe uh, there's a great tweet by Olympia Erkin on on this with a picture there a little uh, animated a little bit of video actually if you want to check that out uh, so um, yeah so the significance of this move it turns out that this move does go way back actually uh, there's two really really classic stem games uh, from this position now Magnus's move Bishop e2 doesn't follow the kind of path which the original earliest major stem game follows which is actually to play Knight d2 so this goes back to uh, a game uh, quite early on uh, of Max Erwa uh, against Cooper that was in Zurich 1954 and it seemed it set off a trend so Knight d4 here one thing to point out well there's a few things to point out uh, let's have a look first at d takes c4 Bishop takes c4 uh, this has been played in like the most recent high level game so this continuation this has been in uh, in uh, 2011 Roy's over 2600 playing against Kamra Kulov 2479 and it ended uh, in a draw let's just quickly play through that for a moment just to get the general gist of that game so it seems as though uh, white at the moment has a small edge but it was agreed drawn here apparently in this night end game but the two really historical games let's have a look at those so knight d2 uh, one of them with d4 here so this might be uh, repeated this opening sequence in another game in this match so this is quite interesting if it's repeated uh, now this looks a little bit dangerous d4 because isn't it allowing knight b3 forking queen and bishop it turns out actually that after queen b6 uh, it looks as though knight a4 is again forking queen and bishop and that looks really dangerous but here bishop b4 check has been seen in a key game Believe it or not, of Tigr Tigran Petrosian against Lutikov, played in Moscow, 1966. This is really, really sharp stuff. Uh, Petrosian played King E2, believe it or not. This looks really quite outrageous to play King E2. But if A takes, with the King stuck in the center, there is some stuff going on here after check. Knight D2, which seems to support the Knight on A4. But then Queen A5... And white cannot play a routine developing move here, uh, it seems. Uh, for example, bishop e2 runs into d3 and then knight b4. And this is pretty nasty stuff. Uh, if queen b3, this continuation is also pretty razor sharp. Uh, but it seems as though white, if white plays very, very accurately, might be able to be okay with a small edge. So it's really, really start sharp stuff, this d4. Uh, so a very interesting Petrosian game there. And also, it seems as though 
this idea of knight b3 you know, isn't as as dangerous as it might seem if black plays uh, for example bishop d7 it seems actually possible to play this uh, at first glance at least against knight b3 this is not a problem believe it or not this continuation with knight a4 it looks as though it should be winning material but actually it's not a problem in this position because of the startling knight b4 so this hits the queen it hits the knight on uh, a4 if white takes that this position after queen takes b4 check knight c3 there's bishop a4 and all of a sudden this is very difficult to hold that b3 knight here so black's doing very very well there if we look at this again with uh, this position but however there is a move in this position against bishop d7 which is c takes d5 this does actually offer something for white knight b3 something very very good for white with knight b5 here hitting the bishop with the queen here and also the knights or the bishop is using that c7 square and it, in fact here it's better to use the bishop for bishop c7 than the knight coming back which unveils an attack on the queen and this is a disaster for black so that is uh yeah very very interesting stuff i thought in the bishop d7 line uh but also let's have a look at knight e4 uh, which seems a bit cheeky here given that this knight was it seems totally designed to hold against knight e4 uh, it seems knight b3 this position uh, with knight a4 this is very interesting check check knight c3 this should be with a big advantage for white it's no big deal uh, here black hasn't got major compensation white should have a big advantage so it is kind of fine but not for knight takes e4 uh, let's have a look on knight takes e4 uh, this this is not really um, this is not really promising too much uh, this this is okay so but it's actually knight b3 is the key move uh, and if we just quickly look at this again if uh, bishop b4 check isn't played then uh, the c5 bishop is hanging uh, if queen a6 then that's a total disaster or is it after c takes d white ends up with a big advantage yes so anyway knight e4 it seems the key the key move is knight b3 here and then the knight a4 works quite well so it is indirectly designed against preventing knight e4 and it became the kind of top move after that major stem game so knight d2 historically is the move not not magnus carlson's bishop e2 this is uh, very interesting now it turns out um, that leela chess uh, playing white kind of did play Magnus Colson's move here Bishop e2 I believe and if I'm wrong about that I'll put it in the pin comment but Bishop e2 and Knight e4 this is stockfish playing black played Knight e4 on d4 here ed Bishop takes this should be just an even position so Knight e4 but here in game two magnus actually played castling here he just castled and after knight takes b takes we saw h6 and eventually it was a draw as we know leela though plays c takes d5 immediately and there's an interesting thing about this with stockfish nine uh tactically stockfish nine it seems has a tendency to weigh both rook takes d5 or e takes d5 as almost the same it seems maybe on a much higher depth it might make a definitive uh, decision about this but in this particular game stockfish 9 uh, played e takes d5 so essentially we have an alternative alternative reality of the game with 
uh, a potential you know dangerous target on d5 on the other hand the difference is this bishop uh, is activated along the diagonal uh, so black has freer pieces you know better piece activity so in this alternative reality is it a problem uh, from from a stockfish perspective this is fine as well rook takes it's it's it doesn't seem to really mind this either it thinks this is even but let's go with this continuation so leela against stockfish nine uh is is it the case basically that the d5 pawn can actually be a losing liability here in this kind of position well let's have a look at, at the evidence of this game white castled bishop e7 and now a4 bishop f6 so black seems to have remarkably good peace activity the bishop though is blunted with knight d4 we have queen c5 on knight takes d4 this position white should have a small edge so knight d4 queen c5 and now the nifty looking queen a2 which eyes d5 yeah from a2 so this does start to cast, cast a little bit of a shadow on having that structural target now here if queen takes c3 knight b5 and then knight c7 is very pleasant because yeah this this is very advantageous to white and if rook a8 uh there uh so after queen takes knight here knight c7 rook b8 knight takes d5 yeah if we throw it for it through knight takes yeah white's got a nice advantage there so queen a2 b6 h3 bishop b7 again looking at taking the pawn this seems to be like white's major pawn vulnerability but the queen is doesn't seem the right it doesn't ever seem the right time to take it because of knight b5 and knight c7 here again and this position is again to white's big advantage so bishop b7 rook b1 uh now here g6 if we check this again there's actually rook fc1 here and the speculative queen sack doesn't really do much for black doesn't do much favors for black white has got a good advantage there so g6 rook fc1 but is there enough evidence or is there any idea of exploiting the d5 weakness was stockfish nine really right that this pawn is no big deal well if any engine's going to prove it leela's kind of the master of pawn structure so this is really quite an interesting investigation between you could argue leela's more of a long-termist uh than stockfish nine well uh and other people might argue well that depends on how much uh hardware resources you throw at the problem to investigate this but okay so knight a5 we have rook d1 just leaving the protection of the, the c pawn uh on taking then this is again trapping the queen so knight c4 which seems to celebrate basically an advantage of having an isolated queen's pawn is the hook squares it's quite often the hook squares and it, and you might think well this is also uh, quite an attractive knight in front of this vulnerability here so it does seem at first glance why would there be a problem with black's position in this simulation let's take it further knight b5 knight e5 blunting the bishop from coordinating with the knight queen b3 we have bishop a6 bishop f1 bishop c8 and now queen b4 and again a little bit of a shadow is start, starting to be cast over the d5 pawn in my view with this move bishop f5 rook bc1 bishop e6 a5 so yeah trying to install a form pawn here now is an interesting idea to celebrate indirectly white's position if black takes on b4 c takes knight c4 this position with the form pawn is advantageous to white there's there's a lot to be uh, happy about so rook dc8 a6 so this seems to be stage one install a form pawn here uh so stage one is kind of complete and what would be stage two here to celebrate this d5 pawn in this scenario knight c4 well there's a radical move that Leela plays here 
maybe not so radical it depends <laughs> if you're used to playing such moves white to play here if I give you five seconds okay g4 and this gives way for the bishop to target that d5 pawn so yeah this is starting to look a little bit more dangerous perhaps for having this target on d5 bishop e5 bishop g2 uh, we have move f6 here on bishop takes f4 e takes this position uh, seems as though it should be advantageous for white taking out that center pawn here even if it is swapped for a pawn over there with this form pawn on a6 queenside form pawn this actually is very nice especially if white can win the a7 pawn so yeah it seems as though it is looking a bit shaky now f6 we have rook b1 king h8 g5 bishop takes e takes f takes f takes some simplification getting rid of the dark square bishops but d5 is looking a lot more vulnerable now the queens come off and in fact so we have this scenario now where yeah this is looking really shaky knight d4 nice blockade square use knight a3 rook a1 the knights come off yeah stockfish decides to take the knights off and yeah that pawn it falls so basically white has achieved the mission basically the first mission was installing the form pawn on a6 and finally winning that central pawn yeah and uh and actually this is now very very comfortable for white and great technique is shown by Leela here let's just follow the game through so the form pawn given up over there but now yeah these pawns on the king side uh, the extra pawns are actually winning now in this rook and pawn ending so not all rook and pawn endings are drawn so anyway here it was adjudicated as a win for white it's a winning position but uh, yeah it does echo to me in game two uh, that Caruana playing black was actually very very careful and fatic with his move in particular knight c6 to e7 to be able to capture on d5 not leaving a liability on d5 but rather suffer a bit of queenside pressure instead so in a way Caruana is kind of uh, long-termist more uh, you know structurally long-termist and maybe you know the d5 pawn can become an issue uh, in the Queen's Gambit declined if, if it's an isolated pawn but it needs very very careful play uh, so in this example the form pawn being established and then Finn chatting the bishop getting rid of the dark square bishops leading to the downfall of that pawn and a better end game it does seem possible it seems even against Stockfish 9 to to do something with that position uh, if you enjoyed this simulation this game analysis uh, please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net which is my site play against other youtubers you will also check this and other analysis of the world championship games etc and other games from the improved menu you learn from the masters okay comments questions like shares subscribes uh, with the notification bell all appreciated thanks very much